Welcome to the Creating Sections and Questions in the Question Library demo. In this demo, you will learn how to use the D2L Brightspace Question Library to create, organize, and store questions. At the end of this demo, you will be able to create sections and questions in your question library to contain and organize material for use in building your assessments. First, log in to your D2L Brightspace account and go into your course. On the course navigation bar, click on the Course Tools drop down menu. Then choose the Assessments link. Notice the tabs across the top Manage Assessments, Question Library, Statistics, and Lockdown Browser. Click on the Question Library tab. We are going to create a new section. A section is a folder that organizes test questions. A folder will hold all of the questions for one test or one section of a test. From the new drop down button, select the section link. Give the section a name in the section name field. This one will be named Chapter 2. Click the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a new section in the question library. Now, we are going to create new questions in this section. Click on the section name to go into its folder. Click the New button. Then, from the list shown, click on the type of question you want to create. In this demo, we are going to create one of each of the most used question types. If you want to see how to create a specific question type, go to the video table of contents along the left side of your viewer and click on the question type you'd like to view, or view the demo specifically for that question type. Click True or False Question. In the Question Text field, enter in your question. Example, the sky is blue on a cloudy day. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click on the Insert an Image icon. Under Answers, select the correct answer. You can leave the point value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. You will see a preview of the question on the right side of the screen as you edit the question. Under the Options drop-down menu, you can add feedback, hints, short descriptions, and enumeration. If you wish to give feedback for this question, it will show up after the assessment has been submitted. If you wish to give hints for this question, it will show up as the assessment is being completed. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, Click on the drop down menu next to the Save button and choose the Save and Copy option. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of the same type, click on the drop down menu next to the Save button and choose the Save and New option. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a true or false question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on Multiple Choice Question. Click in the Question Text field and enter in your question or statement. Here we will use What color is the sky on a clear day? If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click on the Camera Icon button. In the Answer Choice field, enter in the choices that you want to show up for the question. Here, we will use gray, blue, orange, and white. If you need to add more choices, 
Click Add Answers. Check the circle next to the correct answer. If you want the answer choices to be randomized each time the question is loaded, make sure that the Randomize Options checkbox is checked. Note, do not use the Randomize option if one of your choices is something like all of the above. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. You will see a preview of the question on the right side of the screen as you edit the question. Under the Options drop-down, you can add feedback, hints, short description, custom weights, and enumeration. If you wish to give feedback for this question, it will show up after the assessment has been submitted. If you wish to give hints for this question, it will show up as the assessment is being completed. If you wish to give partial credit for certain choices, you can do that using the Custom Weights option. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the drop-down menu next to the Save button and choose the Save and Copy option. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this same type, click the drop-down menu next to the Save button and choose the Save and New option. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you are finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left. You have now successfully created a multiple choice question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on Multi Select Question. A multi select is a type of multiple choice question where the student can pick more than one answer. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. Click in the question text field and enter your question. Example, which of the following are odd numbers? If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click on the insert an image icon. For this question under enumeration, pick the style you want to use. The common choice is A, B, C, D. For style, you can have the answers show up vertically or horizontally. For grading, you have the options of all or nothing, right minus wrong, or correct answers. If you want the question graded as the student got it right or wrong, use the all or nothing choice. If you want the question graded with partial credit, you will want to use one of the other two options. If you want the answer choices to be randomized each time the question is loaded, make sure that the Randomize Options checkbox is marked. Note: Do not use this option if one of your choices refers to an answer placement such as all of the above. Under the Value column, enter in the answer choices you want to show up for the question. For our question on odd numbers, we might put answers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you need to add more choices, go to the Add Option field above the Values column. Enter in the number of choices you need to have added and click the Add Option button. This is a question with five choices and three of them are correct. Under the Correct column, check the boxes for the correct answers. Note that the correct answer should be A, C, E. If a student answered with A, B, E, let's look at the grade 
the student would receive using each of the grading options. Using the all or nothing choice, the answer is either all correct or is all wrong. The student didn't get all of the answers, so they scored a zero for this question. For the other two options, the student can get partial credit. Each question choice is worth one-fifth of the points because there are five answer choices. An answer that was supposed to be chosen, here A, C, and E, and was chosen is counted right. An answer that wasn't supposed to be chosen, here B and D, and wasn't chosen is also counted right. In this example, of the five question answers, the student chose three right answers, A, E, and D, and two wrong answers, B and C. Using the right minus wrong option, the student will score three-fifths minus two-fifths equaling one-fifth of the points for that question, or 20%. Using the correct answers option, the student will score three-fifths of the points, or 60%. If you wish to give feedback at the end of the assessment, you may enter your desired feedback next to each choice. If at any point you would like to see what the question will look like, you can select the preview button at the bottom. Once you are finished previewing the question, select Done to go back to the edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information, so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this same type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you are finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a multi-select question in the question library. From the new drop-down button, click on Written Response Question. This is an essay style question that you will need to grade manually. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Example, what is the student's job in this class? If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click on the camera icon button. Check the Enable HTML Editor checkbox. If you want the student to be able to use the HTML editor when answering this question, this will give them the ability to format their text and use the spelling and grammar checkers. If you want the students to answer the question in a standard text box, leave this box unchecked. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. You will see a preview of the question on the right side of the screen as you edit the question. Under the Options drop-down menu, you can add feedback, hints, short descriptions, answer key, and custom response box size. If you wish to give feedback for this question, it will show up after the assessment has been submitted. If you wish to give hints for this question, it will show up as the assessment is being completed. The Answer Key field is for you to type the correct answer in for you to use later when you grade this question by hand. Remember that written response questions will not be automatically graded by D2L Brightspace. You will have to manually grade them. The Custom Response box gives you the ability to let the system know how long of an answer you are looking for, and it will give the student a text field in the appropriate size for that response. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, 
click on the drop down menu next to the save button and choose the save and copy option. This will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this same type, click on the drop down menu next to the save button and choose the save and new option. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the save button in the bottom left. You have now successfully created a written response question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on short answer question. This is a fill in the blank question where you type in the underscores to make the blanks and the blanks to enter the answers are at the bottom of the question labeled blank number one and blank number two etc. The order of the answers matter. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Use the underscore key as blanks in your question. Example, I teach at blank Technical College. I use D blank L brightspace. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the camera icon button. Count how many blanks you left for the students to enter. This is the number of blanks you need to have. Notice that you start with one blank. If you need more blanks, use the add blank button. In this example, we need two blanks. The answer box is where you type the correct answer. In blank number one, for this example, we will type in Midlands. From the drop down menu, you can choose for this answer to be text, which is non case sensitive, case sensitive, or regular expression. Type in Shift 6 M I D L A N and set the evaluation type as regular expression. This will allow the system to take an answer of anything that starts with M I D L A N as the correct answer. Fill in the answer box for blank number two. In this example, we will type in open parentheses two close parentheses and set the evaluation type as regular expression. This will match anything that has a two in it, such as D2L brightspace, D2, or 2345 as a correct answer. You can leave the point value set to one this number can be changed later when you create your assessment. The how are points assigned box is how much credit the student gets for each answer choice. You can choose that the student gets equally partial credit for each correct answer or that the student must answer all the blanks correctly to receive credit. You will see a preview of the question on the right side of the screen as you edit the question. Under the Options drop-down menu, you can add feedback, hints, short descriptions. If you wish to give feedback for this question, it will show up after the assessment has been submitted. If you wish to give hints for this question, it will show up as the assessment is being completed. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the drop down menu next to the save button and choose the save and copy option. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this same type, click on the drop down menu next to the save button and choose the save and new option. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the save button in the bottom left. 
you have now successfully created a short answer question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the multi short answer question. This is a fill in the blank question where the boxes to enter the answers are at the bottom of the question. The order of the answers in the answer blanks does not matter. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Example, list three tools in D2L Brightspace. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the Insert an Image button. Figure out the number of answers you need to have. This is how many input boxes you need. In this example, we need three. Set the row and column size of the answer box you want the students to see on the test. Fill in the answers in the answer box. If you need to add an answer choice, click on the Add Answer button. For this example, we will add 21 more answers. Note that three of the 24 answers will give the student full credit since there are only three input boxes. Order is not important. The weight box is for how much credit each answer gives the student, assuming all answer choices are weighted evenly. Divide the number of input boxes into 100 to get the weight of each box. For this example, we have three answers so each box is weighted 100 divided by 3 or 33.33 percent. If at any point you would like to see what the question will look like, you can select the preview button at the bottom. Once you're finished previewing the question, select done to go back to the edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the save and copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created multi short answer questions in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the fill in the blank question. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the Insert an Image button. Notice the Add Blank and Add Text buttons. We will use these later. This question type is set up so that you type in text, then there is an answer blank on the next line, and then there's some more text. You'll see that we stop in the middle of our sentence as we build each of the answers, and then we pick up where we left off and continue our sentence. In the first text box, enter in the first part of your question. Example, to increase student participation in the D2L Brightspace class, use the the blank number field choices are for the size of the answer box you want the students to see on the test. The answer box is for the right answer. The weight box is for how much credit the student will earn for answering this portion of the question correctly. If there is only one blank in the question, this should be 100. If you want to give multiple right answers for a blank, use the Add Answer text. 
Example, Discussion 50. Click in the Next text field and enter the next part of your question. Example, Tool and to collect homework use the Click Add Blank then click Add Text. Click on Answer under blank number 2. Example, Dropbox. Click on Add Answer. Example, Drop Space Box. Both of these are worth 50. Because the student would type either one or the other, but not both. Click in text number 3. Example, Tool. If at any point you would like to see what this question will look like, you can click on the preview button at the bottom. Once you have finished previewing the question, select Done to go back to the edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a fill-in-the-blank question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the matching question. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Example, match the activity to the tool. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click on the Insert an Image button. For grading, you have the options of Equally Weighted, All or Nothing, or Right Minus Wrong. If you want the question graded as they got it right or wrong, use the All or Nothing choice. If you want the question graded with partial credit, choose one of the other two options. In the Choices Values section, you type in the choices. Example, Discussion Board Assessments. Click on Add Choice to add additional values. Dropbox Content Grades. In the Matches Values section, you type in the matches. Example, Post a message, turn in homework. Click on Add Match to add another value. Take a quiz, view course materials, view score on assignments. In the Correct Choice column, choose the choice that goes with the match. You can use the same choice more than once and you don't have to use all of the choices. Here is a grading example. This is a question with five choices, and let's say the student answered three of them correctly. Using the all or nothing choice, the answer is either all correct or all wrong. The student didn't get all of the answers, so he would score a zero for this question. For the other two options, the student can get partial credit. Each question choice is worth one-fifth of the points because there are five answers. An answer that was supposed to be chosen and was chosen is counted right. In this example, of the five possible answers, the student chose three right answers and two wrong answers. Using the right minus wrong option, this student would score three-fifths minus two-fifths, which equals one-fifth of the points for that question, which is 20%. Using the equally weighted option, the student will score only the right answers, 
or three-fifths of the points, which is 60%. If at any point you would like to see what the question will look like, you can select the preview button at the bottom. Once you have finished previewing the question, select Done to go back to the edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you are finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a matching question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the ordering question. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Example Put these steps in order for submitting an assignment. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the Insert an Image button. For grading, you have the options of Equally Weighted, All or Nothing, or Right minus Wrong. If you want the question to be graded as the student either got it right or wrong, use the All or Nothing choice. If you want the question graded with partial credit, use one of the other two options. In the value column, enter in the answers in the correct order. Use the add item text to add values. For our example, we will need to add one more value for a total of five items to order. Example, enter Dropbox tool Click on Homework Folder, click Add a File button, Browse Computer and Upload File, Submit Homework. Here is a grading example. This is a question with five choices, so let's say the student answered three of them correctly. Using the All or Nothing choice, the answer is either all correct or all wrong. The student didn't get all of the answers correct, so he would score a zero for this question. For the other two options, the student can get partial credit. Each question choice is worth one-fifth of the points because there are five answers. In this example, of the five possible answers, the student chose three right answers and two wrong answers. Using the right minus wrong option, the student will score three-fifths minus two-fifths equaling one-fifth of the points for this question, which is 20%. Using the equally weighted option, the student will only score the right answers, or three-fifths of the points, which is 60%. If at any point you would like to see what the question will look like, you can select the preview button at the bottom. Once you have finished previewing the question, select Done to go back to the edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you are finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created an ordering question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the Arithmetic question. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. In the question text field, enter in your question. Example, 
If you have X apples and Y oranges, how many pieces of fruit do you have? Notice that the variables are enclosed with curly braces. This tells the computer that X and Y are variables that will be defined for this question. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the Insert an Image button. In the formula area, enter in your formula. Be sure to put the variables inside braces. Example, X plus Y. The Answer Precision box tells the computer how many places after the decimal to use when determining if the answer is correct or not. This example sets the answer precision to one place after the decimal, which means an answer of 10 must be written as 10.0. Check the Enforce Precision box if you want D2L to mark the answer wrong if the incorrect number of decimals is used. Set the tolerance depending on how much error you will allow in the question. If you set the tolerance as units plus or minus 0 0.3, then an answer of 10 will be acceptable if it falls between 9.7 and 10.3. You can also set the tolerance to a percentage of the answer. Enter your units. In this example, our units are fruit. Enter the percentage of this question's value that the units will get. We'll set this to 10%. Now, we get to the variables. We use the variables in the question inside the braces but here we do not enter the braces. Put a variable name in each name box. Next, set the range for the variable x. Example, min 1, max 5, decimal places 1, step 1. This means that when the computer chooses an x value, it must choose the value according to these rules. The lowest x it can choose is 1. The highest is 5. It can choose a number using a step of 1. This means it can only choose 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Next, set the range for the variable y. Example, min 3 max 7, decimal places 1, step 0.5. This means that when the computer chooses a y value, it must choose the value according to these rules. The lowest y it can choose is 3, and the highest is 7. It can choose a number using a step of 0.5. This means it can only choose 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5, and 7. Now, click the test button next to your formula. Notice the variables and the sample values chosen. Notice the formula, the solution with units, and the range. Make sure that the formula is acting the way you expected it to act. Then click Done. If at any point you would like to see what the question will look like, you can click on the Preview button at the bottom. Once you have finished previewing the question, select Done to go back to the Edit screen. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. 
you have now successfully created an arithmetic question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the significant figures question. You can leave the title of the question blank. Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. You can leave the points value set to 1. This number can be changed later when you create your assessment. Click in the question text field and enter in your question. Example, add x miles and y miles and round to three significant figures. Notice that the variables are enclosed in curly braces. The braces tell the computer that x and y are variables that will be defined for this question. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the Insert an Image button. In the Formula field, enter your formula. Be sure to put your variables inside braces. Example, x plus y. Choose how many significant figures you want in your answer. Choose what percentage of the question will be lost if the significant figures in the answer is wrong. Choose the tolerance that will make this an acceptable answer. Enter your units. In this example, our units are miles. Enter the percent of this question's value that the units will get. We'll set this at 10%. Now we get to the variables. We use the variables in the question inside braces, but here we do not enter the braces. Put a variable in each name box. Next, set the range for the variable x. Example, min 3 times 10 to the 4th, max 4 times 10 to the 4th, step 1 times 10 to the 2nd. This means that when the computer chooses an x value, it must choose the value according to these rules. The lowest x it can choose is 3 times 10 to the 4th, or 30,000. The highest is 4 times 10 to the 4th, or 40,000. It can choose a number using a step of 1 times 10 to the 2nd, or 100. This means it can only choose 30,000, 30,100, 30,200, all the way to 39,900, and then 40,000. Next, set the range for the variable y. Example, min 4 times 10 to the 4th, max 5 times 10 to the 4th, step 1 times 10 to the 3rd. This means that when the computer chooses a y value, it must choose the value according to these rules. The lowest y it can choose is 40,000, and y increases by 1,000, so the next y choice is 41,000, 42,000, 43,000. The highest y value cannot exceed 50,000. Now click the test button next to the formula field. Make sure that your formula is working properly, and then click the done button. If you want to see what the question will look like, click the preview button at the bottom of the page then click the Done button when you are finished. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information, so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button. That will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a significant figures question in the question library. From the new drop down button, click on the Likert question. You can leave the title of the question blank. 
Doing so will make the question text show up as the title. Click in the introductory text field and enter in your question. Example, rate the following questions. If you want to add an image to go along with this question only, click the insert an image button. In the scale field, choose the option you want to use. Example, satisfaction scale. In the values column, enter the questions or options you want rated by the scale. Example, how did you like this test? How did you like this course? Click the preview button to see the questions and the scale together. Notice that we have five choices here. Click the Done button. Click on the checkbox for Include an NA option. Click the Preview button again. Notice that we now have six choices with an NA option at the end. Click the Done button. Click on a different scale, such as the Importance scale. Click the Preview button. Notice that the questions stay the same but the column titles have changed. Click the Done button. If you want to create another question very similar to this one, click on the Save and Copy button. That will save this question and create another one with all of this question's information so that you can just edit this question's information instead of retyping it. If you want to create another question of this question type, click on the Save and New button that will save this question and give you a new blank question of this question type. When you're finished making changes, click on the Save button in the bottom left corner. You have now successfully created a Likert question in the question library. You have now successfully created sections and questions in the question library.